of destruction. Of insatiable blood loss. We are his savagery incarnate. The epitome of brutality. Rewarded for our ferocity. Join our relentless hunt in act the wrath of the Blood God. Unleash your fury. Blood for the Blood God. Skulls for the Skull God. Corn cares not from whence the blood flows, only that it does. So I'm making a video here for my brother who just recently got the game. And for Charlie, who I've told several times that I'm going to make him a video, which I have. I just wasn't pleased with him and ended up deleting him. And I'll be playing on GeForce now, going over some of the unique things about playing on GeForce now as opposed to normally playing on Steam. And GeForce now is all based upon your bandwidth and I have Verizon Fios and minimum required ping in milliseconds is 80 recommended is 40. I have Verizon Fios I, I get 10 so I can run everything max settings and it is great so as we load up we're going to go over to the mod manager and it has to sync with the cloud each time for your mods and I don't typically play with any mods that affect gameplay I pride myself on when I stream on being able to play campaigns without mods but the better camera mod just better camera for battles and brighter borders, which are supposed to make the borders brighter, why the company can't fix it themselves is just a testament to how bad they are. And I also use the Decline Diplomacy mod, which isn't a big deal with Scarbrand. We'll go ahead and load up here. Also got a new head, new headset today. When I say new, it's the same headset I had, but the right headphone had lost a bit of volume, so now I can actually hear through both ears now fully, and it's nice. <laughs> the seizure warning was not in the game when it first came out. <laughs> and the Realms of Chaos, which essentially nobody plays after you've finish a Realms of Chaos campaign. Everybody plays Immortal Empires. But to help my bro out who's going to be doing his first campaign as soon as he gets some time. He's got one of those things, what are they called? Um, oh yeah, a life. So he doesn't get to sit on his ass and play video games all day like I do. I'll go through the cinematics and everything. Um, you don't want to watch the cinematics, you don't want spoilers, just go ahead and skip through until I get the actual gameplay. The Tome of Fates. It reveals the secrets of the past, the present, and what may come to be. Most would think me fortunate to own such a book. But I can only use it in service to others. That is my curse. It wakes, tormenting me once more. Feeding on the mysteries of this world. Unraveling them into opportunity. But opportunity for whom?
Okay, so using GeForce now, it does not save your graphic settings in this game. So you always want to first, every time you start it up, you want to go over to Options. And you want to switch the quality to Ultra. And the reason for that is not only it looks better, but it affects the unit size to Ultra. You can go from Small to Ultra, which affects the amount of hit points each unit has. Uh, the game is balanced for large unit scale, but for all the streamers and all the cool kids, we all play on Ultra. And as far as game settings go, I have the advisor set to minimal. Starting off, you're going to want it on high. Um, once you start getting the hang of things and each faction's unique mechanics, you want to switch it to low or minimal. So I'm just going to leave it on minimal. And we're going to start a new campaign here. In the Realms of Chaos, which is a, a, a not good, but it's a lot, a hell of a lot better than when the game first released. Son of and Dragon. normally I would recommend Chow Ming as a first campaign Iron Wind. for Realms of Chaos, but uh, we're going to roll with Scarbrand today in corn. And I do have to hear this. Now, anyhow, you'll hear it in the game. Blood for the Blood God. So, uh, when I play Immortal Empires, I always, always play on Legendary Campaign Difficulty and Very Hard Battle Difficulty, but Realms of Chaos is such a bad ass, I'm only going to play on Very Hard. The difference is Campaign Difficulty, ranging from Easy up to Legendary, is how many units the opposing armies yield how the uh, battle difficulty they changed it is affects the auto resolve and I'll get into the specifics about it but we don't I don't want battle real sim mode on legendary difficulty you can't manually save so you make a mistake there's ways to get around it but after it's made a save uh, you're stuck with your decision Incremental auto saves will save up to five turns by default. It will save it to the cloud. And let's go. And hopefully I don't... F I made a video last night, but I fucked up enough that I decided not to upload it and give it another shot today. So I'll be doing... Yeah, I'll... I'll, I'll be doing the first... They're called survival battles, which is one of the stupidest things they added to the game. Especially with minor settlement battles, but I'll get into all that. I've never loved a game so much in my life and hated a game so much at the same time. <laughs> I'll try not to focus on my frustrations with it, but... And again, there's a intro cinematic. So, spoiler alert. <laughs> sort of. Jagged rocks and rivers of fire. Here, I found the greatest of all bloodthirsters. Bones of all that walked or crawled littered his lair. Scarbrand, rage incarnate. I had but a moment to make my case, the time it took to sharpen his murderous blades. The demon had spent millennia harvesting skulls to earn the forgiveness of his master, the Chaos God, Khorne. The skull of Urson would gain his favor. What do you know of Korn's favor? Nothing, mighty Scarbrand. I am but a servant, ready to aid your slaughter. 
I can smell the magic on you, Seer. I'll take your skull. Why take mine when you can have the skull of a god? Let me guide you through the maelstrom to where Belagor imprisons the bear. Take his skull. All I want is a drop of Urson's blood. Keep your skull. Give me the bear. One skull for the throne. The rest are mine to collect. Our goal is to take the head of the God Bear. A worthy trophy for the Skull Throne. Find me Skull's little man. Or yours is next. At once, mighty Reaper. The whole region is awash with heads that will easily be parted from their necks. Here is your first prey. A mortal army wishing to catch the gaze of the Blood God. Instead, they draw your attention. Slaughter the mortal insects that infest this region, and claim Bloodfire Falls as your own. Further afield, you'll find plenty more enemies to rip asunder. The forces of hated Slanish cower at the monolith. Or perhaps seek out more of Korn's disciples. Not to ally with, of course, but to kill. For your father cares not from where the blood flows. In the south, you may encounter greenskins. Then there are the Norse. Mortals who will worship you if you let them, or introduce them to your twin axes. If you continue your trail of destruction south, then even richer lands shall be in reach. The fragile souls of Kislev and the Empire will fuel your rise to ultimate power. Only the spineless occupy such settlements. Followers of Korn bring slaughter, raising everything until there is naught but blood-stained ruins. The more skulls you take, the easier it will be to enter the realm of chaos and seek the dying god. So, let the blood harvest begin. Alright, so let's get... Roll in here. So the first thing you need to know about Scarbrand is even though right now he's got an income of 1127, he's going to go into a deficit for pretty much the entire campaign. Scarbrand's economy is based on battles, uh, winning them, and sacking and raising settlements. So real quick, let's get to... The battle difficulty, which is it very hard, and the stats modif modifier. So, if you were to set it to easy, you would get bonuses for yourself. You slide it up to normal, which would be around here. Or so, you get less bonuses. And as you get into hard and very hard, you actually start losing stats. And when you get up to max battle difficulty you have the maximum debuffs. Now the battle difficulty determines the the very hard determines your auto resolve and with the auto resolve even though it says it can say decisive victory nine times out of ten is better to fight the battles manually especially with Scarbrand so you lose less units and over here we got default run which I leave on uh, you always want guard mode off unless you have you can manually set it in the battle because there's a bug with artillery that they refuse to fix and artillery will not always 
fire as intended it'll move into melee range skirmish mode that's for primarily for well only for missile units and Cor Scarbrand Corn only has one missile unit, the Skull Cannon, which I'll get into later. I leave it on off. Uh, mo a lot of them, you want it off, but units like Skink Skirmishers for the Lizardmen, you want on. Um, the Light War Sled for Kislev, you want it in skirmish mode. So it'll when something starts coming at it, it'll back up, but keep firing if it has fire whilst moving. And we should be good there. So the first thing we want to do is Scarbrand. Because we have five, we start off with 5,000 skulls. And a lot of his campaign is based around skulls. And you get skulls from battles. And you get construction time minus one for all buildings. Campaign movement range is increased by 15%. Income from post-battle loot, 25%. Summon from beyond, which gives you... Two summonable units of blood, le blood letters on a two minute cooldown, which is very good. And when you make a blood host, you get an additional two units. And it's good for five turns, but the cooldown is ten turns because they had to nerf it. So, we have skulls for the skull throne. And we're going to go ahead and engage the first army. Yeah, it's a decisive victory, but I want to minimize casualties. And you'll want to minimize casualties too, so we're going to fight the battle manually. And Scarbrand can literally win this battle, and I could leave all those units back but <laughs> I'll show you how to fight this one the only unit you really have to well you don't have to worry about it. the ones that's going to do the most damage is the Marauder Horseman here for the Norskin faction as they fire I believe they fire whilst moving we have units to deal with that. So I'll put one cavalry over here, another cavalry over here. Actually, I already screwed up my groups. And I highly recommend uh, MMO mouse for this. And the Chaos Warhounds of Corn get Vanguard deployment, so I'm going to put them out there. Let me go ahead and take a look at what we got. Here's our hero, Scarbrand, who is exiled from the Blood God's domain for trying to give Corn his own skull. <laughs> I'll get into lore at a different time, but we got Scarbrand up front. We have a Blood Shrine of Corn, which is an excellent unit. We got our blood letters of corn who are mortal worshippers of corn who have died and been turned into lesser demons, minor demons. We have our blood crushers of corn over here. Excellent cavalry. And normally when you pick cavalry, you want a speed of 75 or above. But these guys are so strong with really high armor, magical attacks, excellent weapon strength, and a really good charge bonus. They are worth recruiting. Alright, so let's go. So I'm just going to move Scarbrand up here. and I, It's on default run, and if you hit R, it takes it off run. Now the reason you do that is as units tire they lose leadership and they're less effective in battle. I get my Marauder Horseman up here. Slowly move up my blood letters. 
Now there's their lord. And if you watch the Zerkovich leadership video, bro, you'll know that they suffer a leadership penalty when their lord dies. Alright, so we're good now. So we'll charge in Scarbrand and we'll pop our blood letters. Go ahead and move our... Oh, we want to get those Marauder Horsemen. I'm going to try to be cinematic about this. I also don't want to mess up the battles. charge here. So I'll probably lose a couple more units than I normally would because I want to be cinematic. Okay, so now let's get into disciple charging. So I got my blood crushers there to get the charge bonus for a brief period of time. And I've already won, so I don't even get to show you <laughs> cycle charging. But you want your uh, shot cavalry to charge in. They get a bonus when they're charging, which you double click on. So you get extra damage. Then you can manually pull them out, or you can hit J, and they'll cycle out. They'll back off, and you hit J again, they'll charge back in continuing to do the extra damage but all right so that was easy and we are going to go we can get total favor which is gold so demons of chaos get favor if i call it gold it means the same thing units replenished by 10 percent we didn't lose anything <laughs> i don't think i even took any damage so i don't have to worry about that or we can get 83 skulls and we'll just go ahead for I'll take the favor, I guess. Alright, so... Oh, yeah, the banner of Eternal Flame. Even though I can't get to it, I thought... It just said I got the banner of Eternal Flame. And we're going to go move up here. Now, Scarbrand is the Demons of Chaos are a quasi horde, which means they don't, as long as they're in camp or in raiding status, they won't undergo attrition. And Scarbrand can go into Demonic Portal, which is in camp stance for other factions, which most factions, other than the Greenskins, you have to have so much movement range here. And I've already used it up, but that's your movement range bar. So we'll go into encamp stance here, which allows us to do global recruitment. And we'll go ahead and get two units of blood letters. And we also have a blood reaper hero. We'll move him up. He can't quite make it there. Alright, now this icon indicates a special building in the settlement. Legion points gained, which we're not going to have any alliances with Scarbrand. Everybody hates him. Even the Coordinate factions hate him. Diplomatic relations with demons and chaos. Uh, playing Scarbrand is not about making friends. It's about killing people. So, the dimensional tear, you have two different... With Scarbrand, you have two different ways of building your settlement and we can recruit blood reapers from here but the unit I really want to go with is going to be the chaos warriors of corn they have better survivability but to build that building it would take five turns and I'm not worried about my starting settlement and we would also be able to recruit a cultist of corn from this building Forsaken, Flesh Hounds of Corn. 
Um, we'll hold off on building that. As the, most of the time, you want to keep your capital, your starting settlement, even if it isn't a seven slot settlement. See, here you get the capital, you get seven construction slots so you can build seven of these buildings as you move up and over here you, your minor settlements you can only get three and for research we want blood feasting which gives us the ancillary blood feasters banner which gives us strength from flesh which heals for point twenty percent if whoever has it is in melee and the upkeep for blood oaths which I'll get into a bit is reduced by 5% so you always always want to go with blood feasting first and we also have unholy manifestations here well which let's go ahead it fuels rage. so at tier 1 which is based on the amount of corn corruption you get and you can find your corn corruption here which is increasing it's at 22% you get more control, virulence loss reduction, melee attack, plus two, and charge bonus. 8% for coronate units. And we'll go ahead and pick Scarbrand here, and basically what it does. Um, I'm within range of the settlement here. <laughs> but YOLO. <laughs> I should have done that first, but I don't normally play the Realms of Chaos, so if I goof up, I goof up. So when you play your campaign, uh, make sure you do it before you move in range of the garrison. But we'll be just fine here. Because Scarbrand is one of the top combat lords in the game. And we'll go with pretty much the same formation here. And their reinforcements are coming in from there. Now we have a chance to wipe them out before they even get here. would then give me the option to either wait for reinforcements or just go ahead and fight. And they'll be here in a minute and 32 seconds so I have that much time to wipe this army out. I'm going to pop Rage and Body which forces other units to attack Scarbrand and not what they're supposed to do. Now what's great about the Blood Shrine of Corn is as it's in melee fighting, it replenishes itself. And let's get our cavalry in here. Enthusiasm for playing around the Chaos campaign. And we'll just mash them up. And to uh, keep them back, we'll go ahead and pop the Blood Letter, someone from beyond here. 
So we only got... Demon units are unbreakable, so you have to destroy their leadership, then they just melt away. Here we had straighten out our formation here. <coughs> See, the battle would have been already over if it wasn't for the being in reinforcement range of the garrison. But the, once you've completed the Realms of Chaos for each faction, there's really no sense in playing it. Alright, so we got Marauder Horse and we need to deal with. up here. Now, even though we did take a little bit more damage here, the uh, they'll already be destroyed by the time we actually engage them. We'll pop the Horn of Corn, which increases melee attack by 24. Chaos Warhouse or no danger. Should be able to regenerate some health here on my Blood Shrine. And keep the Warhounds on the Marauder Horseman. We'll charge Scarbrand in here. from there until they've engaged Scarbrand. Let's move them out back and pop our other blood letters. Yeah, I could have done this much better. Oh yeah, so nobody gives a shit about the realms of chaos, so I'll get rusty at it. And we'll charge them from behind. I guess they'll get a leadership penalty. Or being charged from behind. Get our blood shrine back up here. Warhounds here. Rage and body. I love that animation. <laughs> he just kicks him. Probably a close victory. Yeah, 
that's okay. But I don't have to manually fight the next battle because I already beat the shit out of that army so I can just auto-resolve it. And as soon as it pops up, I'll explain to you the unique mechanics Sarbran has bloodletting. And the two battles we fight on one turn increases his bloodletting. And we'll go ahead and take the uh, total favor because we got skulls plenty. We got 169 skulls from that. 2716 total favor. And 2197 experience. They were served. Yeah, I should have, before I, well, see, now, because it increases his campaign movement range after battle, I'll go ahead and merge the units, and you can go away. So, I'll explain later on when it's relevant. Uh, if I move here... Let's not risk it. Let's just gauge. And my hero's out of movement range. So I don't... That's not going to make any difference because they're already so beat up. So I'll auto-resolve it. So after Scarbrand attacks the settlement, you have the option of you can occupy it, which you normally don't want to do. Nine times out of ten. Ninety-nine times out of hundred, you don't want to because it costs you 2,500 skulls. You can sack it, which will give you gold and a little bit of casualty replenishment rate. You can raise it and get a thousand skulls. Or what you usually want to do is blood for the blood god, which gives you a blood host. And a blood host is an additional army. Now you have to pay the upkeep on it, but you don't have to pay supply lines, which isn't up here. I don't think they even put it up there anymore. Each additional army you recruit, um, all the armies that you have gradually increase in the upkeep amount. So we got a whole second army here of 12 units, which will undergo attrition after a couple of turns and there's ways to improve that so we're gonna go into demonic portal if I call it in camp it's the same thing and we are already in a deficit of just minus seven but we got he makes so much from battle and not just sacking settlements but the blood host we go ahead and recruit our blood letters now now you don't, well I'll get into it in a second now that I'm finally done with turn one. And we're going to go with Root Marcher, campaign movement range plus five, and we are going to go with casualty replenishment right off the bat. He hasn't been in a battle yet. So Scarbrand's bloodletting. Every battle, he wins battles, the bar goes up, and here his upkeep is reduced by... 5% his growth, which I'll get into in a second, is increased by 25 points, casualty replenishment rate plus 1, and as you move up, now upkeeps at minus 10, growth at 45, casualty replenishment, corn corruption, and global recruitment duration is reduced by one turn. Now, population surplus and growth. Scarbrand doesn't have a building that actually gives you growth. Your main settlement here gives you growth plus five, which is absolute garbage. And you need population surplus. And from the buildings, he's getting a total of fifth. Building, he's getting five. From his bloodletting, he's getting 45. Now, he needs 125 population s growth points to get a population surplus point. And you need two to build the tier three. You need four points to build the tier four. And five points to build the tier five. So growth is good. 
Now, you don't want to occupy this settlement, waste the skulls. The way corn works is cults will manifest. They will essentially settle themselves. And we'll see that in action here before too long. Now, we, we're not... We don't need Forsaken of Corn right now. We eventually get Flesh Hounds of Corn, but it costs thirteen fifty. We're saving our gold. So this is a situation where you don't normally want to build that. All right, so that was a fairly long turn one, but productive. And there's the Slanashi Army, which... As far as no, I remember, is normally in the settlement. It'll move back. Alright, so we got the Banner of Eternal Flame again. It's actually going to show up. There we go. Alright, so the Banner of Eternal Flame, or ancillaries, that gives the passive ability, Banner of Eternal Flame, which enables flaming attacks for all units and increases base weapon damage by 8%. And I'll get into the different types of damages eventually, but Scarbrand himself by default does flaming attacks and magical attacks and he has a physical resistance as I think all legendary lords have of 20% and as soon as he gets some more save, I'll explain that. Alright, so... I want to kill that army here, and they're in Force March. But I don't have enough movement range with Scarbrand to get there. I don't have enough to get there with him either. So we'll just go ahead and move the Blood Host up here. And I'll put Scarbrand... Well, actually, yeah, this is completely different from the last time I played this, because that army right here usually just sits in the garrison. But they only have that one settlement left, I believe. They've got three settlements, so he's going to end up making a line for my capital. Never expect the AI to act like an intelligent, rational human being. The AI is not good. It's actually fucking terrible. Um, it's more annoying than anything else. So he's going to end up making a line for my capital. But as the garrison... I got seven units in the garrison. You see what units you have as you click on the garrison details. But I do want to get my Chaos Warriors of Corn and my Cultists of Corn. And so we're at minus 527. We don't really need to recruit here. And that's good for that turn. And I forget, it's turn 15? I think it's turn 25 for the first one. You get the uh, 5 or 10 turn warning for the Chaos Rift's opening. So one thing that I do, instead of having Scarbram, these armies are normally very very disposable so I usually charge them in first and I will fight this uh, manually if it's a minor settlement battle and I'm gonna move Scarbrand over here to the 11 o'clock now when you engage settlements like he's at the 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock more or less somewhere between maybe 1.30 he, when he disengages, other than this right here, he's going to bounce back in the same direction after the battle. So you want to position him in the direction, you want to position your engaging army in the direction you want to be going in. Now, I want to be going up here. So that's where Scarbrand is, he's closer there. And... Your hero, there's the campaign movement range bar. You want to embed them after you've moved your army because it reduces Scarbrand's campaign movement range. It went down a little bit, not much because it wasn't that far. So I planned it that way. 
And if this is a minor settlement <laughs> battle... No, it's not, and this is an absolute slaughter. So I don't need to fight this manually. Skulls for the skull Um... This case, I'll go ahead and sack it to get a little bit of income. I'll go ahead and put him in demonic portal and recruit myself. See, now I can get Marauders of Corn dual weapons or Marauders of Corn, which are shielded, which block enemy missiles. And we'll just go ahead with the uh, Marauder. Well. Let's go with dual weapons because Slanesh doesn't have any missile units at all. And we want to merge the units here. That unit is useless. So I don't know where they are now. But it doesn't really matter. And we want to increase mobility first. Alright, so I don't know where that other army went. Ooh, and there's a plague. But it's a Nurgle plague, so it doesn't actually affect the forces of chaos. I'm at war with them. Which I don't I don't care about any of that. Alright, so I'm gonna move them up here to the eleven o'clock. And engage. And they're beat to shit already. And now we want a blood host. So we're gonna blood for the blood god. So now we got three armies and we're still in a deficit. But we don't undergo attrition until we're out of money. Alright, so let's go ahead and merge here. They're fine. And I'm going to put them in Force March because I don't have anything to worry about. But if you put an army in the Force March, you get 50% campaign movement range, but they can't retreat from battle. So if Scarbrand was to be in reinforcement range of this army and they attack that army, Scarbrand wouldn't be able to do anything. And we got another Blood Host here, which is got no campaign movement range and now we can get our cultists to corn Carl Blungenous slaughters my evil deeds that's a mega death lyric so he gets melee attack of 5 weapon strength 10 weapon bad hat which is from Jaws and some bad hat Harry corn corruption we want the melee attack and armor piercing weapon damage cultist of the blood god Building upgrade available. i just going to turn that notification off. You can choose. In game two, they put in the notifications, low funds. Yeah, I'm fine, bro. So I'm still at war with that faction that's to the east of me. And I don't care because we are going right for Nikari. So after this turn, we will be, we're bankrupt, so we would be going, taking on, or experiencing attrition. So they can't get there in regular march, but we're going to go ahead and put them. Now that red circle there is reinforcement range, it's also the zone of control. And if it comes up, I'll show you what zone of control means as far as campaign movement. And we got six more turns until you pop the skull throne again. So... I want to... Uh, don't 
quite remember exactly the layout here, but it doesn't matter. So we're going to go ahead and declare war on this faction. It's a sentient faction. Leave while you can. And there's absolutely no point in fighting that because I have a lot more than they do. But we want to assign the Banner of Eternal Flame to the Blood Reaper. Not Scarbrand, because each unit can only carry one. And he's usually right next to Corn, anyhow. So we just ought to resolve that. And. We'll go ahead and sack it. I mean, I could undergo attrition for a few turns and get another army, but. Yes, he already has me. Without supplies to sustain him, it, it's a bit of a bug. Next turn, it'll go, turn it'll go away. But like I said, they're quasi horde, which means they don't need a settlement to not undergo attrition. So we'll put them in demonic portal. As if I left them in normal campaign movement range, they'd be losing units each turn. And we want more casualty replenishment. And for our Blood Reaper, we're going to go with weapon strength and charge bonus. And I don't see that army up here. We'll move our cultist up. Pretty good unit. He can summon up to three units of Blood Letters and up to two Blood Thirsters once he's leveled up. So we want to get to and take out Makari ASAP. He is our number one adversary. Each of the, well, the, between the four, all right, so I got strength from flesh. Between the four mono gods, there's rivalries. Corn hates Slanesh and vice versa. And Nurgle hates Cinch and vice versa. For the four brothers, they don't get along very well. That's why they're constantly at war with each other. It's called the Great Game. So, we got this... We got a unit... 15 unit army up here. Go ahead and merge these units here. You're useless. Alright, so he's got full campaign movement range now. So we'll go over zone of control. He can't move because he's in the zone of control of this settlement. Scarbrand is not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Scarbrand to the 12 o'clock. Again, he can't move. That's his green box there. Now that Scarbrand's going to encircle this settlement. And before I forget, which I constantly do. Now that Scarbrand's encircled it, he can move wherever he wants to. So we'll move him up at the 11 o'clock. We want to take as few casualties as possible. Now they're already undergoing blood host attrition. So we'll move all of them up here. Sacred and we'll get rid of that unit because having a banged up unit like that actually hurts your auto resolve results. Exalted murder. Best murder. And so this is uh, it's not worth fighting because I already beat him last turn. And we're going to get another Blood Host. Which is going to put us, give us attrition next turn. But we got an additional Blood army. Killed. Blood shed. Oh. Herald of Corn. This <laughs> Alright, so we got Ward Save. Yeah, armor with ward save. So we're going to equip that and I'll explain Rolling ward save. Combat. So, there's physical resistance, which protects you from physical attacks. 
doesn't do anything good against flaming attacks or magical attacks. Ward save is a flat out total damage resistance, so he's at 8%. And with his physical resistance, he has the normal physical attacks, he has 18% physical resistance Intensify in total. My blood rage. And we'll go ahead with the spoilers income. Well, we might change that later. Probably not. Income from sacking settlements, 10%. We'll go with the corn corruption. A tool of corn I don't care about my funds. Alright, we want skulls for the skull thrones. Which will give us 50 skulls per turn, but reduce diplomatic relations by 10 with all factions. And, like I said, you don't play a Scarbrand to make friends. You play a Scarbrand to mass murder. And I'm going to go be grabbing myself a beverage here in a moment. So, Alright, so we're bankrupt again. Done! For the blood wolf. Humble yourself, apostate. So we're not at war with them. Destruction for all. Yeah. Spread ruin on them. Master of blood. Demons, go further. I go. Actually, now that I've oh, raffle fiends. We're going to move them up here. We're going to go to war with them, too. Slaughter. Say, Craig, executioner. They don't have enough campaign movement range, but... The Wrathful Reaper. I'm going to go ahead and declare war on them. And we'll be coming across Nakari before too long, so they have another army up here, so let's take a We'll do it we'll go ahead and manually fight the siege battle, I suppose. Alright, so they got eleven units in that army, but they're not in reinforcement range. Alright, so while this blows up, I'm gonna grab myself a beer. We got our banners assigned. And siege battles fucking suck. <laughs> right back. Alright, so with Scarbrand and Siege Battles, you normally want to send in your Blood Host first as to protect your main army. Because they're pretty expendable most of the time. You don't give a shit about them, but you want Scarbrand and his army to be ready to go. So we got two reinforcing armies, and you can move... To an extent where your reinforcements come in in game three. You weren't there wasn't reinforcements in games one and two. So we'll just go ahead and bring both armies over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move Scarbrand and Blood Reaper go back here. And group up. And how dare my neighbors smoke marijuana when I don't have any. Those bastards. We the Here my window open so I can smell my neighbors smoking weed. And I am jealous because I don't have any weed right now. Which will be remedied in a couple of days. Alright, so we're all set here. I can just send Scarbrand in. I just need to... Ah, there's the gate right the there. Reaper. 
and I am not used to having the balance of power up here because when you play on legendary difficulty, you don't get the balance of power. So he's got to knock down the uh, gate here. And they're firing on them, but they're small targets. Alright, so I'm just going to have them retreat, withdraw, so I don't, they don't take any damage from these stupid fucking towers. So the balance powers drops. And I'll triple speed it. And how long to my reinforcements? Not long. Alright, so I'll let Scarbrand do his thing here. And they can just chill here by the door. I don't want them to take any damage. And let's try to be cinematic here. Which under normal circumstances I don't do on a stream because I want to keep everybody alive and do... take as little damage as possible. That's one of the reasons I like doing co-op campaigns with people and streaming them is because when they're fighting their battles, I can be like the director and just sit back and show everybody the battles. Alright, so now I got reinforcements and I don't care about these guys. So they can just charge them on the walls and move our other units up here. So Scarbrand's already got one. He gets two self heals while in melee combat. So as Scarbrand's doing damage, he's healing. Alright, so we got two Chaos Fairies. Chaos Furies, I call them fairies. They're kind of useless. We'll put them on the missile units. I just leave my Blood Reaper and Blood Shrine right there. Until backup gets here. Well, my Blood Letter is supposed to be coming up on the walls. Get the other two lords up here. And the Furies have engaged the Marauder Horsemen. And my blood letters are approaching the walls, and apparently they, um, just pull, they don't carry the ladders with them, they just pull them out of their ass. <laughs> and they'll put the ladders up against the wall. And just let Scarbrand do his thing. Yeah, I suppose I can bring my uh, Blood Reaper in here. Yeah, I got another Blood Shrine from the Blood Host Army. And they'll go to work. And Scarbrand's at 106 kills already. <laughs> and as my reinforcements got here, the balance of powers shifted once again. Their ladders have docked on the walls. Yes, they just pull ladders out of their ass. There they go. Get up there. We got another lord charging in. 
We got our Blood Reaper doing some work. Now he ends up getting a Blood Shrine of Corn as a mount, so he'll end up healing himself. So there goes our Blood Shrine. You can see his health points replenishing. So he's taking some damage, but he replenishes as long as he's in melee. And I'm already bored of this, so I'm going to do an advanced tactic. Control A, and just blob everything. <laughs> yeah, these siege battles and this guy, they're just so tedious. Alright, so he's taking some damage. Let's back him up. They're not going to last much longer. Yeah, it's so nice having the balance of power to see <laughs> how many units they have left instead of doing guesswork. But they're dropping fast. And once they've lost enough units and enough of mine haven't died, they'll incur the army loss penalty and they'll all just break. So it's almost already over. And I'm not even going to get in the, the victory locations and control points here. Uh, I, I, I guess I should real quick. You have the control points. They, they decided to make this game like fucking Fortnite for some reason. So if you take a control point, they're not able to have their towers. Which is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard of. Other than the Roman Chaos campaign itself, because why would you build missile towers within your base? Because you're more likely to hit your own troops, and friendly fire is very much a thing here. But if you take over a control point, they lose the ability to build towers, which launch missiles, uh, build barricades, and you. If I wanted to fight this and have them lose by victory tickets, which is the stupidest thing ever. You would have to take the key building, then the victory location, then that would start ticking down, and you can essentially just win battles by standing somewhere. Pyrrhic victory. That was only Pyrrhic because I withdrew my first army, which counts as losses. But my all my units are in pretty good shape. The Blood Reaper took a little bit of damage, but he's fine. But my main army is intact. And I will assess the situation here before I decide what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I got 2,000 gold, 2,011. And from sacking this, I'll get 4,000 gold. Gold or favor, I should say. So I'll go ahead and do that. Even though I could get away with getting another blood host, which I'll do next turn. Oh, I got a bloodthirster in that blood host. Alright, so Scarbrand's good. Let's put him into a cam. Why was he undergoing attrition? Yeah, that's He's not. He's in a deficit, but he's got gold. And they still haven't fixed that because, in Creative Assembly, in the words of Joe Pesci in Raging Bull, sucks big elephant dicks. They are an absolute shit company. But I digress. So everybody's there at bloodletting. Tier one. Scarbrand's about to get tier two. So. That means our capital, which we don't give a shit about, is at 140 growth from bloodletting plus the five, so it's at 135. Cultist of the blood god. So we got that army down here, Ragnar Death Dealer, and we got that army up here, which we're not worried about too much. 
We're going to go for Unholy Resilience now. We're going for Lightning Strike, which allows you to attack an army, even if there's other armies in reinforcement range, to just single out one single army, and they can't bring reinforcements in. And mobility, mobility, mobility. Definitely want that. And I'll go buy the book here, even though I normally don't spend too much time worrying about hero skills. But you want to improve the leadership. The one stat to rule them all. And hopefully you did watch. If you haven't, watch Zerkovich's video on leadership. It's the most important Total War video you'll ever watch. He also has a series of videos called Why You Suck at Total War, which are great. Alright, so Black Venom got destroyed. Now we have... That army. That's moved in here. And... I do want Scarbrand. I want to go that away with Scarbrand. Alright, so if you are in Force Marsh, you get a Vigor in Battle penalty of tire that means your leadership will drop. So you take them out of that. And to regular march. And this is a close victory. And we'll go ahead and fight this manually anyhow. Um, control large army. I'll get into that, but we will control a large army. So we have to fight another siege battle. But, like I said, these other armies are expendable, so I can just charge them in, not worry about them. It's actually helpful because it reduces my upkeep costs, and I don't have to worry about them dying. And they'll engage everything, then Scarbrand will come in and clean up the mess. And keeping my main army intact as much as possible. And yes, if you ever install this on a PC or play it on a PC, you definitely want to put it on a solid state drive because load times take four fucking ever. Alright, so I don't care about any of this, so let's just go up the ladder. You guys take the gate. We'll go ahead and move our reinforcements over here, I suppose. They're going to be here in three minutes. Eesh. And Scar ran two and a half. So we'll triple speed it. And we'll, we'll get the gate down for Scar Brand by the time he gets here. It should be down. And without reinforcements, we're. Screwed on the balance of power. Now you can actually lay siege and take a few turns to build siege towers and stuff, but uh, you want to fight as many battles in as short a period of time with Scarbrand as possible. Normally you do anyhow, sometimes it's beneficial to go ahead and siege them. Because after the first turn that you siege them, now they start undergoing attrition. So you don't even have to fight the battle, they'll just starve to death. Oh, and one thing I do want to point out. Um, you can fight battles on everything but legendary difficulty in slow-mo. And you can actually issue commands before the battle starts to your units of what they want to do. And you can actually pause the game, look what's going, see what's going on, then issue commands to your units and they'll pick them up. You can't do it on Legendary, but when you're learning the game, don't hesitate to do so. You can pause the game on Legendary, but it brings up 
the menu and you can't do anything with any of your units. Alright, so here's our hero, Scarbrand, and his Blood Reaper. So bring the Blood Reaper up here. And the Blood Shrine up here. And I want to keep my main army. I don't care about the Marauders anymore. So I'll send them up. And it's still bugged, and they all try to go up the same wall. So I'll just move them up here. I don't care about these guys, so I can bring them up. And we got our other army coming in. So we will take these blood letters up here. And again, they try to go up the same ladder instead of sprinting out like they're supposed to. Once these units that are on the well, they're going to die, but once they take over the wall, they lose control of the towers, so they'll stop firing missiles at them. Where are you going? I did not send you that way. Oh, and the fucking gate bug. They didn't actually take out the gate. They just opened the gate and let units in. That's where he went. This, it, this has been a problem since fucking game one and they still have not fixed it. Get up there. Do worse, son. Huh? Get up there and attack the fucking gate. This is why I hate this game. See, they opened up the gate again, even though it's... I don't think it's actually destroyed. Yes, I am definitely lacking enthusiasm about this campaign, but I need a break from Red Dead 2. Wish I started over again for the third time in <laughs> about three or four weeks. So I'm waiting for the DLC, which was supposed to come out in December, which the DLC before it sucked so bad they had to go back and fix it and delay Thrones of Decay which earned the moniker of Thrones of Delay which is probably very close to getting delayed again I get my Blood Reaper up here alright taken over the walls so those towers oh no I have not taken over the walls Seize their skulls. Marauders of corn. Yes, let's get our marauders of corn up here on our marauders Because they closed the gate, my fucking other lord stopped attacking or stopped moving. Half the time this game's as fucked up as a football bat. We serve the slaughterer! 
Let's go ahead and bring my cavalry up. Let's bring everybody up. Let's just control A. Backfather's <laughs> marauders! Rivers of blood! We flee! Yeah, 626 units left. Let's get them out of range of the tar tower. I don't want to lose that blood shot, but he's doing okay. I should go ahead and take that on. Put those towers down. Jeez, those towers are so fucking annoying. Damn, my blood reaper's in trouble. If I actually cared about this campaign, I wouldn't have let him take much damage at all. Everybody back here. These fucking towers, that shit is so annoying. Taking out their lore should just about do that, man. Alright, that's it. Now they have a hell cannon. The hell cannon is unbreakable. So I just have to... All their other units broke. I just have to take out the hell cannon. And of course, there's a fucking barricade there. Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, if you have to build barricades within a fortification, a castle, or whatever, it's probably time for you to get the fuck out of there. So why they did this shit? Uh, they're chasing trends. Like, shit like in Fortnite. Just like they were chasing trends with their... $100 million six year failed project behind this, a hero shooter. out of ammo anyhow. So, nothing's doing any damage to me. So just take them out. And at the loading screen I'm hitting the head here so I'll be right back. Well, I suck at caring about the realm's chaos, I should say.
We're at minus 1448. But we got 7,206 in favor, and we're going to do blood for the blood god. And I've demonstrated my point for the most part. So what I'm going to do is change, lower the battle difficulty too hard. So I don't have to manually fight stupid, pointless, repetitive battles like those over and over. And I can auto-resolve and get through a little bit more. You know, this isn't a live stream where I would be on Legendary and very hard. Like I said, this video is for my... Well, I have to give this disclaimer because I've posted several videos lately that's gotten... 50 or more views, which I know isn't a lot compared to the uh, 32,000 I have on one of my videos, but I don't know why people are watching videos where I don't even put the title of the game in it, but somebody's watching. But this is for my bro and for Charlie, and I got the Obsidian Blade, excuse me, armor piercing weapon damage of 100, and that is the best weapon you can get from battle. Under normal circumstances. Alright, so we're at minus. I need glasses. Minus 18 something, 1855, 45. Go ahead and merge units here, and he's got some campaign movement range. So do they. And we got an enemy army down there. So we'll put that into Force March. And you've outlived your usefulness. So you're gone. The Fear Masters. What a shitty blood host that is. And I just spawned them. Wrathful Fiends. You go over here too. Bring me bodies. And he doesn't have enough range to get there. No meaning. Hold. And what I'm gonna hold. do is Scarbrand is Um He has enough range to get there. So let's go ahead. I was gonna no wait wait wait, wait. yeah he does. And that's a decisive victory. Am I gonna lose anything? Uh not from Scarbrand's army. So I, I, I wanna kinda get to the Chaos Rifts. And everything else you see on enough battles for this. I mean, if you want to watch me fight battles, I'll be streaming within streaming again within a week or so. Alright, so let's go ahead and merge our units here. You can go. You can go. And we'll go ahead and we want Chaos Warriors of Corn. They don't have the melee attack, magical attacks. They have more weapon strength. Actually, they do have more melee attack than them, but they don't have the magical attacks. But they're more heavily armored at 110 than the blood letters which are at 35 and I want survivability though once we get up here Blood Mountain has a special building landmark building which reduces upkeep by 30% for blood letters of corn so that's where we want to get to but we gotta take all this out and we're moving towards lightning strike and again, we want to go by... Well, actually, let's go ahead. Safety first. We want missile resistance. 
and we're gonna boost up his leadership again. Man, let's not forget about our cultist corn. Yeah, what happened to these guys? Yeah, they're gonna end up taking the capital out, but I don't care. Usually you want to defend your capital as best as possible, but with Scarbrand, you just kind of YOLO. Peace treaty. Um, I could take it and attack him next turn and suffer a diplomatic penalty with all factions and people are more likely to attack me, but I won't. Okay, so we got a coordinate faction up here. I don't even remember with this map, but here's Nikaris. He's at war with myself and the bloody sword. I already. And we're looking good on upkeep and whatnot. Let's move Scarbrand up to the. Uh, 10.30 o'clock. Yeah, right there should be good. And I'll probably disband them after this turn. Uh, yeah, let's get Scarbrand to engage. So he gets the... Well, he's got two more turns, so... But he's got campaign movement range. After he gets that, not now. But let's get his blood letting up. Yeah, it's an open field battle, so we don't need to fight that. Hey, I'm trying to get to the realms of chaos. The, uh... Yeah, the chaos rest. And we're good on income, so let's get another blood host. Now this is what makes Scarbrand so powerful. He's got five armies, even though some of them are banged up, undergoing attrition. But the ability every time you attack a settlement and win to get another army is just insane. And skill points here. Now we have Lightning Strike, which is what we wanted. And we'll go ahead and get his leadership up. The Blood Lord. Oh, I should have moved him first, but Alright, now we're squarely focused on taking out Makari. Yeah, check what turn we're on here. All right, we're only on turn 10. All right, so now Cinch is ascended in the great game. Lord, we have brokered an alliance Okay, be quiet, old man. Go away. I'm not fighting any quest battles right now. And we don't have any holy. We got six more turns until an unholy manifestation. Now, because the AI has gotten better about going into ambush stance, and they will catch you unaware, you want to send out the non-legendary lord armies first to avoid said ambushes, so we're clear of ambushes there. He doesn't have enough movement range to get up. And we'll put him into in camp stance, and we'll get ourselves some more chaos warriors. Get one more, and we'll bring everybody up here. And I will put them in force march because I don't have that much to worry about right now. And I'm not playing on Legendary, and I'm not streaming, so if I need to save Scum, then I can just do so. Yeah, 
And they attacked my capital. Uh, I can auto resolve it. Oh, here's I don't care about my capital anyhow. Wherever Scarbrand lays his head is home. Alright, so the, that army was recruiting, they retreated. And we want to head up towards Slanesh. Um, so we'll have this army engage in circle. Again, this is a decisive victory, so don't have to worry too much about it. So I want Scarbrand to actually initiate this battle. Um, actually, no, I don't. I want my junk armies to take on Nakari first. So move the other armies up here. Get everybody in reinforcement range. Now, I don't think he can actually get into... He'll be in Scarbrand's army next turn. All right, more research. Campaign movement range plus ten for blood hosts. Income from post battle loot plus ten. Income from raiding. We don't do much raiding. Up for eat for chaos warriors chosen minus five. Corn corruption. Plus five percent chance to automatically colonize ruined regions. Uh, we'll go with skull harvesting. Get increase our post battle income. Auto resolve that. And blood for the blood god. So we have another army. So let's get all these armies up here. Merge them. And we'll put Scarbrand in camp stance. He doesn't need any units right now. Move all our armies up. Merge them. Uh, you can go. More skill points. Alright, so I'll just put it on auto assign. You technically want leadership first and... You would probably want melee defense. Well, actually, physical resistance, then melee defense and weapon strength. But after playing so many thousands of hours in this game, I'm just going to put it on auto assign. Checking in occasionally to make sure he gets through the uh, full mobility. Now, what's this dipshit doing? He didn't retreat. So we'll go ahead. Don't want to waste their range. We're they're, they're fairly beat up. Now they're going to retreat. Oh no, they're not going to retreat. Alright. Uh, none of this really matters. <coughs> Alright, so the sightless are destroyed. That's why they didn't retreat. They can't retreat once they don't have any settlements. So, Nikari will give me a peace treaty, which means he's just about dead, or he's in serious trouble. But we want to take him out and make the Palace of Ruin our new capital. And he could very well be in ambush stance. And I'll YOLO force march. Now, remember, you normally don't want to force march. But I'm going to do so with my expendable armies. 
Attack and clean. And make sure they're all within reinforcement range. Moving. Not set. Legion, not and we'll stop. undertake attrition after next turn. The wrathful reaper. And we'll go ahead and put Scarbrand and Ambush Stance. And hopefully I can get my cultists into Scarbrand's army. Which will have to happen Glory. next turn. And a Chaos Cult has manifested. So, you get cults. Randomly, usually. And you have four options. You can get 25 skulls per turn if you build that. You get 100 skulls each time a battle is fought in the province. Or if a lord's present, you get 40 skulls per turn. Or you can automatically teleport there. Now, let me clear this up. and I sometimes <laughs> get this wrong. So... Infernius, the capital, is a region. With the Brass Glacier, now, see, that's how you build this corn. Um, that automatically settled itself, but that's only going to make it attackable and more desirable for that other Slanesh faction to attack, so we're just going to abandon it. But they, corn settled settlements on his own. So, that's a region. Death Axe, that's a region, that's a region. All the regions combine to form the entire province. So that's the difference between regions and provinces. And we're not going to worry about the cold upgrade right now because we beat Poe. And now Nakari wants a peace treaty, which means he's in trouble. But we want to finish him off because even if we get a treaty with him, he's going to end up clearing war on us. And there's Nakari now. So we have some options here. So, I'll point out, we're going to go ahead and encircle here. And what encircling does in this situation because they are in force march they can't retreat and when you encircle normally they're in reinforcement range that army and the garrison of six units would be all in the same battle now that they're encircled they can't do anything and we only got 14 units in that army. So we want to make sure we're right in reinforcement range. And we're going to move them up as well. Right into reinforcement range. You just have to find the edge of the zone of control or reinforcement range circle. Um, that's got 14 units. Alright, so he's close enough. That's not going to really make a difference. So we'll embed him. And we'll go ahead and attack him, and this will be a decisive victory because he can't reinforce. Yeah, I'm, I lowered the battle difficulty. I don't want to manually fight everything. This is an extreme. We'll auto-resolve and we'll go ahead and replenish our units. Alright, and our cooldown on Skulls for the Skull Throne is over. So we're going to pop it. Destroy. Now, you get defeat traits from defeating legendary lords, but it has to be the legendary lord that engages, and that's a pure victory. So, instead of losing all my units, well, 
I've already done enough manually fighting battles here. This is meant to be like an educational video. So I don't have to fight everything manually. Alright, so that's a close victory. That's fine. So I've defeated Nikari. Um, we'll go ahead and take the gold. We'll take the uh, favor on this one. That's a good chunk. And so... Yeah, another trait here. Ranked up in enemy territory, so campaign line of sight, which is how far you can see, went up by 15%. My Cult of Sikorn got a mount. I sacked the settlement. And income from sacking settlements, plus 10%. Got some armor, and don't worry about all that shit later. So I defeated Nikari. So character experience gain, which applies to lords and heroes, is increased by 7%. And speed is increased by 6%, which is really good. Leadership aura, plus 10%. Income for sacking settlements, plus 4. That's pretty good. And I got a regiment of renown. Which is good. And... So, Blood Mountain is what I want because of the 30% reduced upkeep for Blood Letters. We'll go ahead and put him in an camp. I just move them up here. Merge units. You can go. And we're good on income. Like I said, he's going to be in a deficit, but he's at 18,717 for total favor, which is pretty good by turn 13. And we'll just go ahead with our Chaos Warriors of Corn. Do our skill points. Now we're going to go for... He's at four points. <laughs> Rage Incarnate. And you can look at over the skills yourself. And the first thing we're going to go for after that is Gore Feast, which gives him an additional 0.10% of replenishment while in melee combat and income from post-battle loot by 15%. And we're not worried about missiles right now. And we'll just go through campaign movement range. This will also give him Vanguard Deployment. And the Wrathful Reaper, which gives base weapon damage that lasts 18 seconds. Cooldown of 1 minute. Base weapon damage, 50%. Armor piercing weapon damage, another 50%. And he's already on auto assign. And for our Cultus of Corn, who's already got 5 points... You want replenished troops. And thick skinned, you want to build up his armor, make him more survivable. And you can look at Scarbrand down here and see he's got casualty replenishment rate plus 14%, which is pretty good, really good. And campaign movement range of plus 20%. And we can go ahead and upgrade our cult here. And we'll just go with the skulls per turn for now. Oh, it's Daniel. What do you want? I don't give a shit. You suck. Daniel the Demon. them last time and we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves another blood host and the Kari's main army's been wiped out and we want to go right for the palace of ruin our main focus because it is essentially in the northwest corner of the map
And we wiped everything else out. So they only, Nakari only has two settlements left. And I'm at war with the Beastmen? Alright, so I'll get a peace treaty with them. Which will net me 989 gold. For favor, I should say. I didn't even know I was at war with them. Who else are they at war with? Maggotkin? Yeah. Alright, so they're at war with a Nur minor Nurgle faction. Merge them. You're useless. Sacred Executioner! Bloodshed! And they're about at the end of their existence. Actually, let's just go ahead and get rid of them now. Sacred Executioner! This and Never! Here you're good for another turn. Oh yeah. No meaning. Bloodthirster in that army. Force march so they can get up to reinforcement range. Seek victims the drink of blood. They are scum. And let's make sure all our armies are in reinforcement range. And once again, they're drawn to destruction, so they've settled another. Occupied another settlement. Not settled with settlement. But we don't care about that. And Infernius can go up to tier 3, but we don't care about Infernius. Okay, let's move these guys up here so we have to manually fight this. Now when you're doing your own campaign, you're going to want to fight these manually, but I've demonstrated enough. And we're at Decisive Victory. And we'll go ahead and sack it. And we'll do skill points next turn because I want to get to the opening of the rifts. Alright, so we don't need a blood host right now, so we're just going to go ahead and occupy it. Regiment of Renown. Come. And they only have the one settlement left. So we'll just send all our blood hosts out to die. Impossible. So the palace of ruin, we're gonna go ahead and switch that right over here. And we'll go for income from post battle loot. Income from all buildings, enemy leadership. Alright, fuck it. We'll just get our uh Chaos Warriors. And we'll go with Missile Resistance. We don't have to worry about Slanesh Control. And Corn Corruption. And again, we'll go for Armor. And Safety first, so Missile Resistance with Thick Skin. 
Alright, so we got our second tier of research here. Bonus first large. Income from sacking settlements plus 25%. Like I said, his economy is based on battle. Alright, so we can get three blood letters locally. And... Let's go with the cheapo units. Because Scarbrand's about strong enough now, we don't have to really worry about our supporting army. And we want to finish off Nakari here. And they can win it themselves. And I am actually going to go ahead and move all these armies up here and probably disband them right after this. They're all pretty beat up. They've served their purpose. And we'll have achieved goal number one. Ah, we're gonna sack this. That's pretty good. Income from that. They got their traits, and you can read over all this shit on your own. Ah, let's just go ahead and get rid of everybody. Sacred executioner. Oh, we're not going to get rid of an army with a bloodthirst in it, actually. Alright, let's get rid of the uh, garrison lord not moved. Warning. He's got full campaign movement range. Cinch is ascendant. So we'll get Scarbrand moving on out here. Eddie does get to replenish in foreign territory. And he's almost maxed out on bloodletting, so his upkeep's at minus 20%. Growth is at 70. Casualty replenishment, corruption, global recruitment duration. And we'll go ahead and pop the unholy manifestation. Which it's four units against, but we have 17, not worth fighting. And we'll take the favor. Alright, so we're only at minus 826. Scarbrand's got just about a full stack, even though that auto resolve did fuck me pretty hard. So you want to fight those manually. And we're about to get the. Special building here. Uh, but we still want to go with Chaos Warriors of Corn. And we'll go with Melee Defense. And I'll be back in a second. So these guys want a peace treaty? Yeah, sure, why not? I forgot I was even at war with you. Alright, the flesh is a canvas, so I gotta pick a trait for my hero. I get melee defense plus 10 or enemy leadership. Oh, I'm taking enemy leadership. Minus 6. And I'll make a video with an army I've created recently to show you what leadership debuffs can do. Alright, so... Blood for the blood god. 
Ward save, five percent, talisman of protection. Man, I haven't even looked at these guys. I, I don't really feel like getting. All right, that gives physical resistance to fifteen percent now. That for Scarbrand is awesome. So Scarbrand is now up to twenty-five percent physical resistance, combined with his ward save, which is going to give him. Whatever math figures out, I don't feel like thinking about it. <laughs> um, I hate numbers. There's like too many of them. All right, so we'll go ahead and give him. Oh, he gets ward save a five two. The other trickster shard. Potion of toughness. All right, whatever. Spell resistance 10%. We'll go with the leadership. Lord not moved. Alright, so he's at war with the uh, minor Nurgle faction. And. I'm still at war with that starting Slaneshi faction. Yeah, nobody likes Scarbrand, so diplomacy is not very useful here. Excess. They'll take a peace treaty with me, which I'm not near I them. So to keep them off my capital, I will take, take that peace that? treaty. Faction destroys seducer, seducers of Slaanesh. So Nakari is gone. And we're going to go ahead and move Scarbrand up here. And he's got 19. So he's finally got almost a full stack. And we're going to take the flesh ounce of corn, the corn dogs, which are one wicked good unit. They're good at pinning down missile units, and they're also pretty good at taking out regular infantry. Father me. We got the Song of Blood, which gives us Corn Corruption, plus two. So where's our Corn Corruption at, anyhow? Uh, 372, which ain't that great. I never usually get it even up to level two, but... Let's go ahead and declare war on Nurgle, because we got six turns. Faster! Faster! And they're all down here. I don't know if they're over here. Yeah, they are. How many settlements do they have? They got seven settlements. A minor Nurgle fashion with seven settlements. Or wait, 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 wait. That's Maggot Ken. Septic Claw. Alright, Maggot Ken. Which are down here. Alright, these guys have seven settlements, which should give me plenty of time to wipe them out and get ready for the first rift. Which the warning will come up at turn 25, then you'll get either five or ten turns to be warned of it. And it alternates between five or ten turns after the warning. All right, so we got a full stack. We're fully healed. We're at full blood lead, full blood letting, and Scarbrand's operating on all cylinders. Shortly after breaking with was considered an act of treachery, nobody gives a shit because I'm Scarbrand. I'm a fucking demon, and we're gonna go with blood for the blood god. In its campaign movement range, it's been improved or increased. Oh, same thing. So we're just going to go on a murder spree here. And wipe them out. And whoever declares war, whoever's stupid enough to declare war on me, will pay for it. And we'll do skill points next turn. Nurgle's Ascendant. 
I have three more turns on the Skull Throne. And we have been drawn to destruction, so now we can actually start worrying about building things. So we'll go to Tier 2 on that, and the Palace of Princes. We'll build that up. And we'll YOLO down to here. Acceptable. Herald of Khan. Khan. I crave bloodshed. <coughs> they have an army there. Right, so we'll engage from there, so we'll bounce back a little bit. I don't care about that army, and uh, there's. Oh, Jesus, they didn't rebuild these settlements. So we'll go ahead and get another blood host. And the cultists of corn. Full on casualty replenishment now. See, they lost those battles to the beastmen. The AI is terrible at rebuilding their settlements. So he's in force march and he can't retreat, but they'll still do some damage. Well, they only lost 79, but it doesn't matter. And that's the Scarlet. I don't even care. So they did their job. And I don't have to pay the upkeep for them anymore. Oh, and he went into Force March like a dipshit. Alright, so... No way, sir. Let's get Scarbrand up there. And they have a settlement over here, so we're just going to move him over there. So they have to split their forces in the direction they're moving in. Oh, and I got another hero. Blood Reaper. Yay. And we're back to research. I might have to split this video up in two parts. Alright, attrition minus 25%. For my blood hosts. Income from all buildings, which doesn't matter. Uh, we want the skull throne cost minus 10%. Let's so get a little bit hungry here. And he wants a peace treaty because he's in bad shape. Which I'll take for 2400 gold. And have no intention whatsoever of honoring it. Because you don't play Scarbrand to make friends. Most of the time, you don't want to do things like this, but... The more he fights, the better. Alright, so my reliability rating is low. Favor 848, we're good on Skull, so we'll take the favor. And he's got the range to get there. So we'll go ahead and get another Blood Host. <laughs> this is so overpowered, it's ridiculous. They just keep making army after army. Skill points next turn. Try to breeze through, breeze through until at least the first um, rift opens. I could have actually attacked there, but I'll probably do the next video. Oh, the talisman of preservation, which gives you 16 ward save, and that goes right to Scarbrand. 
replacing his physical resistance. And we'll get the Dawn Stone, 15 physical resistance. To our Blood Reaper. And Scarbrand's got full campaign movement range. Just about. Uh, we'll go ahead and head over this way. Oh, and he's got a Nurgle Plague, but... Oh, he's going to undergo attrition anyhow. Now, bring our armies up this way. And we'll get another blood host. So once you fully get the hang of everything, you can just send your blood host out and sack minor settlements and get army after army after army. Um, ad nauseum to infinity and beyond and you could just literally wreck the entire campaign. Especially in Immortal Empires once you get going. But I will be splitting this video into two parts and the first survival battles are, I, I'm not going to fight that. They're easy enough to figure out. You just basically want to put your you want to build your defenses, your barricades, and your towers. And let them do the work and keep your units safe and let them charge at you. Um, there's a... The final battle against Bellacor is a tad tricky. So that's probably what I'll skip up to when I get back to making the next video. And I did get up at 1.30 this morning. I'm a little bit tired. Oh, and they declare war. I mean, that's fine. And you're going to declare war. Fine. Good. The more the merrier. And you're going to declare war on me, too. And your allies. Great. This is this is what you want with Scarbrand. The tome of fate calls to me, foretelling of a way to elude the maelstrom and enter the realm of chaos. The dying god will roar again. We must prepare. Muster an army that can withstand the terrors you shall face. I have such army. All right. So that's what I was waiting for. So. It switches between, alternates between 5 and 10 turns. So I don't know if it's going to be turn 30 or turn 35. And we're drawn to destruction again. So we'll build that up. Oh, we got the uh, whole province now. And minus 1500, which is fine. So. The whole this campaign sucks so fucking much. So we got our hero to move up. And we'll go ahead and encircle. And they don't have the trait Siege Attacker. So they would have to encircle for two turns. And I don't care about any of this, so... Let's see if that army should retreat. Which it does. But they're still in reinforcement range. And we have a decisive victory against them. But we have a bloodthirster in that army, which has the trait Siege Attacker. So
So if you don't have the trait for a unit of siege attacker in your army, you have to encircle for at least two turns. Too powerful. So I'll back that army off. And I will encircle here, and he has siege attacker. I just want to resolve this. And that's a lot of gold. Or favor, I should say. So I'll take that. And get rid of you. Force march you up here. And the only thing I'm worried about right now is keeping Scarbrand healthy. So he's ready for... The, drink of blood. the first rift to open. The rift and now we can drink issue a of. commandment. Because we have the entire province. So we get income from all buildings. 5%. Melee attack. Control. Chance of a plague spreading. We'll go with campaign movement range minus 20% for enemy armies starting their turn in this region. Enemy armies in the province. And we've got the Palace of Princes. We'll go ahead and hold off. I just want to do the um, explain the first rift. I'll probably ought to resolve it. Like I said, you just have to hide your army within the range of the towers and let Scarbrand do all the work. Alright, so Skull Throne's up, so we'll pop that. I'm actually going to go ahead and switch the difficulty down to normal. That's a valiant defeat. Because they are undergoing attrition. Merge them and move them up. And where do I want to send Scarbrand? I want to send Scarbrand towards the hero. And we'll go ahead and build a siege tower. And we got more research, and we'll go with minus 25% attrition suffered from the skull thrones Bloodthirst attrition. And we're going to be replacing one unit here. So we'll go ahead and replace one of the Marauders. So he'll be in the army next turn. And just trying to get through to the first realm of chaos. Now they sallied forth. And they don't get the auto-resolve bonuses from doing a siege. So we win that. As if we had actually attacked them, auto-resolve would have... Lost us to battle, and let's get another blood host. Because why not? You will suffer. You will die. You will be re Great. Come! The Lord's River can teach. It will be done. Alright, we're drawn to destruction again. And we don't even care about that. And just makes it a more attractive attack target for the enemy to attack, so we're just gonna abandon it. Alright, so who wants some of this? Let's head down, let's bring Scarbrand down this way. And we already wiped them out. And they got more settlements oh down here, so we'll just Slaughter. bring them all down here. Still in a deficit, but still got plenty of gold right now. Your favor. 
and in immortal empires there's a lot more settlements combined into a denser area and you have plenty to attack so you'll be good in immortal empires don't care about you Destroy! Now this is also, the AI is dumb, really, really dumb, and they'll just go after whatever's closest. So by doing things like this, and the settlements I don't care about, just draws them away from them. You'll figure out the AI fairly easily. It's fucking stupid. Executing. And we're, of course, going to go for... Ooh, well, that's 8,000, so we'll go... We'll sack it. Alright, so just a couple more turns. Just want to make sure I explain Scarbrand's campaign, and it'll lend aid to... Other factions. Now the beastmen have ambush stance, so that's a decisive defeat. Oh, it's a pure Rejoice. victory. Wow, way to go, dumbass. Like I said, the AI's stupid. And now, how many of these pussies want peace treaties now? Oh. Okay. So we'll encircle, and that's a victory. Oh yeah, well I'm on normal battle difficulty now because I want to speed this along. I don't want to be sitting here all night playing fucking rounds of chaos. And yeah, let's get Big Daddy up here. Yeah, what you want to go for, I'll just put this on auto-assign. As soon as it's available at rank 13, you want to get the Gate of Corn, which gives, allows him to summon... Yeah, I fucking hate that they changed this. More blood letters every two minutes. And you get to summon up to three, and then you get to the Greater Gate of Corn, which allows you to summon a Bloodthirster. So you get four additional units. But you want to go for mobility, casual with your heroes. For all factions, you want to go with mobility, growth, um, casualty replenishment, and things like that first. Yeah, fuck it. Die. And I strongly recommend, um, after you've won a few campaigns on normal difficulty, increasing the difficulty to hard, very hard. Um, not a lot of people play on legendary difficulty. Um, the AI doesn't do anything special. They don't get special abilities, special attacks. They just get more cheats essentially reduced upkeep more armies um recruitment time but i have ocd so i play on legendary very hard all the time all right so it looks like it's going to be turn 35 before we get to the first rift and yeah you're toast but that reduces my upkeep so i don't care and we'll move you on up. Oh, you fucked up. See, they they went and took out that one army, and they have absolutely no chance of winning with that garbage. And we want to bounce back that way, so we'll go to the... 
7 o'clock, 6.30 position. And schmuck them. And we'll take the total favor. The Wrathful Reaper. Blood! Ah, that mobility doesn't stack. Enjoy last moments. Yeah, we got more life. research to do, and we want to get skulls to brain, which gives us an additional 40 skulls per turn, and reduces the skull throne cost by an additional 20%. To the of the skull All right, so we got four turns before we get to first chaos rift. And yeah, whatever, I'll just. Even if he loses units, I just want to explain that. I don't want to be playing that. But there, from that battle alone, he got 10,906 favor. So remember, that's how his economy works. Most other factions are based on buildings and trade, Scarbrand is based on murder. And we'll just go ahead and put him over here. So he can... He doesn't have to do global recruitment. We've made our way back down to Infernius. And we don't care about you. So, we're only, uh... 346, I think that says. I need glasses. I need to get to an optometrist. And we'll go ahead and get our Chaos Warriors of Corn. And everybody should be on auto assign. So who cares? And we have another cult that manifested. Now I could be a dick and go ahead and just transport there instantaneously. and attack them. But just trying to get to that uh, first chaos rift. And then onto my meatloaf. Oh, here we go. The god bear rose in pain. A death rattle felt across the dimensions. Its arcane energy rips across the mortal plane, creating rifts and scarring the world with gateways into the Man, chaos I'm gonna hit realms. The head here in a second. The tome of fates knows all. The rifts are our opportunity to reach the chaos realms. Now, I truly earn my fee. And yet, a gateway opens both ways. While we may traverse the rifts to enter the realm of chaos, or even be transported to far-flung areas of this world. We must close the gateways not required, or the demon tide that flows forth will lay your lands in ruin. Yes, that's one thing you need to be aware of. So, the rifts are open, and you need a hero unit to go to the rifts and close them, and... Alright, so there's one here. I'd be losing. I need a hero unit to close the rift or an army to close the rift, but an army capable of winning a battle against the rift that the army that would spawn from the rift. So we have a Nurgle rift here. And we have a Slanesh rift here. So you'll want to pre stage your heroes or your armies or whatever. And we have a Slanesh Rift here. I crave bloodshed. And I'll go ahead and merge, which I should have done last turn, but I got one unit here. One regiment of Renown I can recruit. And while this plays, I'm going to hit the head. To trespass upon the Chaos Realms, is to step into a nightmare. Four domains ruled by their cruel masters. Nurgle, the master of plagues. Slanish, 
the Lord of Excess, Tinch, the Changer of Ways, and Corn, the Blood God. We must visit each realm and steal a soul from a demon prince, for it is these souls, one from each of the great powers, merged together, that shall light the hidden path to the forge. Okay, so normally what I do is head to Cinch's realm. And the reason being they have the smallest armies. You're able to auto resolve everything including the survival battle. But with Scarbrand there's a definite benefit going to Slanesh's realm because there's an ancillary that you can pick up that gives you 250 growth which allows you to get population surplus at an absolute insane rate and it also has the Sword of Slanesh which if I remember correctly gives you 600 armor piercing damage uh, it's a ridiculous weapon. It's the strongest weapon alongside the chain sword, which you can get from Corn's realm. But if you go into another realm, uh, another Chaos God's realm, then you lose it automatically. So the most complicated, the only thing that's actually complicated, is Cinch's realm. Well, it's not even complicated. And the thing about this game is there's so much information about it, a ton of information, uh, none of which is actually com complicated. But we will go to make sure we get the battles to uh, Cinch's Realm. And I'll be right back. The Realm of Chaos, a place unbound. The constraints of the mortal dimensions have no effect here. Only the whims of the dark gods matter. Yet there are places where no ruinous power claims influence. In the Forge of Souls, Belakor lurks and Urson dies. Until we have the four demon prince souls, it will remain out of reach. The realm of the sorcerer. Trust not your senses, for the intricate magics of the great sorcerer reshape reality around you. Try to stay on the right path as you fight through many hued islands to stand triumphant before the impossible fortress. There, Jinchi's favored demon prince, the Librarian, stands sentinel. Slay him to claim his soul. His skin crawls with changing faces. Each one speaks to lies for every truth. So the realm of Cinch, the changer of ways, the great deceiver. The great sorcerer. So what you want to do in this one, this is the only one that's... Oh, this is the most complex one, which... So here's... The Realm of the Sorcerer. This is where you want to go. Now, each one of these points has a sigil. And you only start with one sigil, which is this green L-looking thing here. And this is, the easy, uh, this is the easiest battles. 
because this army only has five units and you can auto resolve through pretty much any of them without too much worry and he has no campaign movement range because he just got there So each battle, he's going to go ahead and attack me here because he's a dumbass and we'll auto-resolve because that's an absolute slaughter. Oh, I could have went to encamp stance and recruit it, I believe. So you have your options down here. You always, always, always want to go to reveal teleport sigil. Alright, so we have revealed another sigil. Yeah, this was completely borked when this first came out, so... We'll look up here at the Demon Prince Souls. So the Oracles of Cinch are here with us in the Realm of Cinch. Alright, yeah, I can't actually scroll down there, but... If you look at the Legion of Chaos, the first symbol is Corn, the second one's Nurgle, then you have Slanesh and... The fourth one is Cinch. Now, it used to be that they, the AI would come here and in just a few turns they'd be able to get to the final battle ahead of you because you have to beat them there. Uh, they've changed it so they have to actually take eight full turns to get there. So we have to beat out um, Kairos. So let's take a There's Kairos up here. But we have one sigil right now, and this is the easiest way to level up. And you don't have to worry about actually beating them, because if they get the four Demon Prince souls before you do, then you get to transport and confront that army, defeat them, then you take... Well, they lose all their Demon Prince's souls. And The stupidest thing about this fucking campaign is because you would have to have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different advisors with seven different of fate, two, Tome of Fates and 28 separate Demon Princes in order to take their souls. and It's just fucking stupid. So we have... Now, you have to be careful of this because that's a teleport locust. If you try to go here to the path of ruins you'll go there and you'll teleport so you want to actually move here well. to avoid that and now you can go here and we're not worried about anything at the moment so we can force march and this will now fully replenish your army and reveal another sigil so you need to figure out what sigil God, this is why they added the fucking seizure warning in. So you need to get to the Green L to get to the battle. And we have not discovered the Green L. So we got the uh, pink Superman S looking thing there. We have Zoro the Gay Blade over here. And we don't know where it is. And I'm just going to turn off skill points here. I don't care. And I probably won't even play the rest of my campaign. I'll just start one on easy to just to show my bro how to do the final battle. Because this is just... Again, we want to go with Reveal Teleport Sigil. And as I was saying, this, this just absolutely sucks. <laughs> Nobody wanted this. And they fucked up the camera angle. Alright, so I've, so what you would want to do next is fight that army. But I'm not going to because I'm going to wrap this up. 
and you would reveal another sigil and you would eventually it's pretty easy to beat them there see there's another sigil that's been revealed so you got the pink ass up there so you would teleport if you go to that one if I was to get over here and click on that one it would teleport me over here and you reveal each sigil and you would figure out which one would take you to the sigil you want to but what I'm going to do here, as I want to wrap this up, is keep him... I want to go to the Rift, because you can switch Rifts. And we're going to go to the Dark Prince's realm. The Dark Prince's realm. Temptation, lust, and gluttony abound in this realm of desire. Confronting Slanish's champion will not be easy, for they are found within the six circles of seduction. As you journey inward, know that you will be lured by temptations beyond any your tepid imagination could conjure. In the center, lies the Palace of Slanish, a monument to perpetual lust, excess, and debauchery. Okay, so I could have beaten, probably could have beaten Kairos to the final battle there, but I wanted to point this out. And I can't go into encamp stance and I'll go ahead and take a blood letter. A couple of blood letters. And I'm still in the hole, but thirty one thousand income. And actually I can go ahead and do a unholy manifestation here. Now if Corn is ascendant, the army like triples in size. But you want to keep Scarbrand's bloodletting up and take the favor, not that it matters. So it'll be fully healed up. <coughs> but I, nine times out of ten, go for Cinch's Realm first just to get the easy battles and the experience and XP. Um, there's a lot of good stuff you can get from Slanesh's realm. So if you end up getting beat out by the AI and you can tell what lore is where by going up here. I'm in Slanesh's realm. There's nobody else there. So I've got free reign here and I've got 12 turns. Now it's at, it's at 10 turns and 5 turns those rifts will spawn demon armies so you want those rifts closed so I would have left one maybe two of those heroes back but I'm just trying to get through this and I don't care about research my brother's smarter than I am so he'll figure this out now that I've forgotten about you Charlie Or anybody else that is going to end up watching this because I have gotten views from unknown sources lately. Alright, so we'll go ahead and transport right over here. That's going to teleport us down to here. And we have the choice. We can get 15,000 favor, charm shield, blade of blood, all this junk, and your army will end up leaving the realm of chaos, but we must move on. So we got an army up there, and we got an army down there. And they both move, well that one moved that way, they're close by there. Oh, and Kugas here now. There wasn't anybody here a turn ago, but now... 
No, I was looking at the wrong one. Alright, so again, you have the choice of taking 20,000 favor. You can get growth. That's highly desirable, especially for Scarbrand. Because his growth is based on his bloodletting. But 200 is super strong. So, if you get that... Now remember, you have the autosave up to five turns on anything but legendary difficulty. You should probably take that because it's really hard. It's, well, really challenging to get Scarbrand to be able to recruit the higher level units, which he doesn't really need, but you get to build up much, much faster, but you'd have to leave the Realm of Chaos. But we'll move on. And you... I am going to declare war on Kugath. Because his army's all fucked up. Which each one of the mono gods has a uh, hard counter to the other, and Kugath is the hard counter to Scarbrand, and they attacked one of my souls. I don't care. My mind's focused on beatmap right now. Alright, so Scarbrand's army's full health, and we'll go ahead and declare war. On him. Because he's all fucked up and he's only got nerdlings. And we'll move up to here. And. <laughs> Again, you get 25,000 favor, Circle of Carnality, which will give you diplomatic relations, plus 20, and control. Plus 200 for 20 turns. You don't have to worry about rebellions, which I didn't cover, but I will at a later time. Your army will leave the realm of chaos, but we must move on. So, yeah, Kugas gonna bitch out. And I can auto resolve this. To keep his blood lighting up. Again, you normally want to fight these manually, but. And we'll go to the next one. And see what we get. This will give you. 30,000 favor. The Circle of Paramount Sea. Which only lasts for five turns. Unit rank plus nine for all units in this army. And Veteran C for units is great. And that's a, almost an entire video in itself. But we must move on. And we have an Unholy Manifestation available too. Now is Kugath going to be us down there? Or did he... Bail. Because there is one thing that you want above all others for Scarbrand in this campaign, and we have a chance of getting it. And, uh, I could never betray Nurgle. And we can fight that army up there. Or let's. You after Kugan. And Kislev claimed the soul. I feel nothing but fury. Yeah, so the Ice Court got a soul. They took soul the uh, Demon Prince of Corn. They are skull of the and I nothing slow you. But for corn. I forget research. Alright, so he's gonna hopefully get wiped out by that army because I want he's gonna beat me to the last one. 
Well, he actually won. And yeah, those armies have spawned, but I'm not worried about anything. Other than meatloaf. Alright, so here you get 45,000 favor. Circle of Vainglory, which will give you a Lord Recruit Rank Hero Lord Recruit Rank plus 5. And all Lords and Heroes increase, increase rank by 15. But we must move on. And there goes Daniel. And again, oh, Daniel's here now. Like I said, the AI is dumb and we're already next to the last circle to get to the boss fight. So here's what we've been waiting for, the last one. I lost my capital, but that's alright. We'll see if it pops. No, it didn't pop, but you get 50,000 gold, or favor, I should say. But at the last circle, you have a chance of getting the Sword of Slanesh, which gives you an additional 600, I think it is, armor piercing weapon damage, which essentially makes Scarbrand as close to invincible as you can as he can be and I'm not gonna fight the survival battle but I know I'll be able to auto resolve it alright so now I have Kugath had gotten there before me. He's, he got killed or he left. Um, Not for the blood god. The so you go down here and click on that. And you're, you're going to want to fight them the first time and they're pretty easy and it'll explain everything because of the advisor of how to replenish your troops if you had ammunition how to replenish your ammunition yeah they're fun the first time um, after that they're just tedious and should get the cinematic here I'll watch this and I'll wrap this up the first soul harvested when well, you get a cinematic for beating the uh, demon prince. They will combine into a single light, revealing a shadow path to the Forge of Souls. Then Urson will be within our reach. But watch this. The tome consumes the soul's energy, reaching across time, revealing secrets. I do want to watch this. This is cool. <laughs> it was the old ones that shaped this world into a paradise. Yet the power they harnessed to move sun and rock could not be tamed. Raw magic erupted from the great cataclysm, flowing forth from a realm of chaos. So came the demons. They hunted the mortals, feeding on their souls. Yet one of their prey betrayed his kin and embraced the gods of chaos. They gifted him demonhood, and he became the first demon prince, Belakor. He clawed at the world, scarred with his armies. Reveling in the bloodshed. Those who seek power will always want more, and Belakor's lust was the greatest of all. Gods of chaos. I don't want this before. Souls. 
Have I not given you the world? Give yeah. me more power. 87 frames a second. In battle, it's over 60 frames Answer a second. Me. I don't know if you can see this in the recording, but uh, the four gods 97 frames a second. They took everything. His armies, his power, his four. Cursed to roam the world as a shadow amongst the shadows, powerless for eternity. Damn the gods! Bellacor has spent millennia planning his revenge on the Chaos Gods. What a twisted scheme has his dark mind constructed. Alright, so that's how to get through the um We look upon the mortal lands once more Demon Soul. having ventured into the realm of chaos. The Tome of Fates thrums with the power of the twisted soul trapped in its pages. To reach the Forge of Souls, we require three more. We are not the only ones who seek the Dying God. They employ their own methods to cross the Veil into the Realm of Chaos. We must act with haste. Alright, so that's how to get through the first one, and I'll probably switch everything over to easy just so I can make a video on how to do the final battle. Um, really quick, because there's a... It, you can't call it cheese, it's just letting the defenses do their own work, so... Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it, which was not at all. <laughs>